Hello everyone, welcome to Sex Talk with Sharonda. My name is Sharonda Parker and I am your host. And uh, before we get started with the topic, I just want to mention some new items that we have. We all know that it's um, springtime and this is when we bring out the eggs. So these are the eggs, just beat it. So they are lubricated. You basically take them a loose, they pop open really big and you beat his dick with it. So it's called beaded eggs, you just beat it. These are for my people who are spring breaking on the go, wanna just be able to fuck his head up one good time. They are only $5 here at the PPG store. I will be adding them to the website today as well. And this is the egg for the man. And of course, I could not forget about my ladies. Ladies, this is the golden egg for you. Um, I get these every year during the spring around Easter. We always get the golden egg. So this is a seasonal item. It's not something that we sell all year long. But if it's time for you to get a new bullet or you just want something a little more cute and classic, because you know y'all be doing y'all thing with your man or whatever, and then you pull out this brand new pretty gold bullet, and you're like, well, baby, where you got that from? The PPG store. Okay. All right. So that is going to be that on that because I want to get into the meat of this live. And this is gonna be, I'm gonna actually do a series on this because I really feel like this is needed. I do a lot of sex coaching. And the one issue that I'm constantly seeing over and over and over and over again is infidelity. And I just really believe that when couples have a certain type of understanding, infidelity can't exist. In other words, if I'm dealing with you in honesty and telling you what I want, whether it is from you or whether it is I want to be able to have an open relationship or whatever it is, even before we get to the wedding, if we have understanding about it, it is not cheating. If we have understanding about it, it is not infidelity. The problem comes in when there is sneaking and hiding and we don't have an understanding because we never had a conversation about outside people in our relationship. We never had an understanding about what it is that really floats your boat. We never had an understanding. All both people did was came with their representatives about what the other person thought the other person wanted. And then we said, based on this illusion of what we thought each other wanted, we decided to form a relationship. We decided to get married, but everything was based on a lie. Derek Jackson is in such hot water right now because he wasn't honest. We could digest this a lot better if he was a person that did his videos and said, hey, I don't believe in monogamy. Hey, I believe that when you separate it, it's okay to start up something else with someone. Hey, I believe that even while you married, you can have this other person for emotional support, sexual support, cyber support, whatever it is you want to call it. The reason he is in hot water is because he made everybody believe that he believed in monogamy. Ladies, I'm about to tell you something. And it's about to hurt a lot of y'all feelings. Most men are not monogamous. And that's just the truth. Most men are not monogamous. And the ones who are monogamous, they're making a choice to be monogamous because they don't want to go out there and do all of that and they don't want to be bothered with it. Or either they can't afford it or either for whatever reason for them, it's immoral. But most men don't think on those terms. And I just have to be honest with you. So if you get into relationships, I'm not telling you to stay or leave or do whatever. I'm just showing you it is what it is. Most times you are not dealing with somebody who is 100% monogamous. With that being said, there are different forms of infidelity, cheating, being dishonest. And today we're going to talk about those different forms. And this week we're going to, in other words, today is going to be an overview 
of what this series will, will be about. And then throughout the week, just, just the same way I did the series uh, Life After the Affair, I'm going to break down each one of these things. So today is just going to be an overview because I really feel like this is much needed. And I think if you understood men, because a lot of y'all, just because y'all got a man, you think you understand men. And you don't. So I come in contact with men all day long. Men inbox me all day long. I'm married to a man. But I understand that one size does not fit all because... A lot of y'all couldn't deal with a Spencer Parker. A lot of y'all couldn't deal with my man the same way I couldn't deal with your man. So the thing is, you have to get to the terms where you can get with people that you can live with and cohabitate with and become be in agreement with and be able to be honest with. A lot of y'all couldn't, a lot of y'all could not get down the way me and Sparker, me and Spill Sparker get down. A lot of y'all couldn't do it if you wanted to. Because it don't look right. A lot of y'all couldn't walk around in model lingerie and have it all over the internet and your man be okay with it. A lot of y'all couldn't host a strip show, get on the microphone, and be out there in the middle of the floor rolling around with the strippers and your husband taking pictures of it. A lot of y'all relationships couldn't operate on the level of openness that our relationship operates on, and that is perfectly fine. But the reason it flows so well is because we operate within a certain level. We operate with an honesty with each other. This is what I enjoy when I go to the strip show. I don't want to be one of the people that's just looking at everybody else have fun. I want to get out there and have fun too. So whether you hear or not hear, I want to be able to have fun. Spencer, if you go to the strip club, I would assume when you go to the strip club that you are entertaining strippers and they are talking to you and you are talking to them whether I'm there or not there. Because I understand what goes on at the strip club. But a lot of y'all can't handle that. You can't handle that level of honesty. That's why you get the lie. You can't handle that Yes, my man likes to look at the different Instagram models and likes to play in their inbox. So that's why he creates the fake page to be able to do it and you get the lie. This could all be so simple. But I am convinced that women would much rather be lied to than to allow the person that they're with to really be transparent. Because see, when I was talking about transparency, y'all was like, mm-mm. See, when I talk about transparency, it pertains to my whole marriage. My whole marriage. Just like yesterday, I was at work. I was working um, the, the mid-shift. I was working Amber shift when Amber is normally here. And one of my customers came in and he was talking about how one of those medications, not one of the pills that I sell, prescription medications... Oh, it had his dick so big. He was so amazed at how big this medicine had his dick that he took pictures of his big dick. And Miss Sharonda, do you want to see the pictures of my big dick? No, sir, I don't want to see the pictures of your big dick. I believe you, baby, because he did what he was supposed to do. I believe you. When I got off from work and my husband said, how was your day? I said, baby, my day was good. Let me tell you about this customer. And he heard about the man who wanted to show me his big dick, but I politely declined. In order for it to work, you got to be willing to operate in a certain level of honesty and you got to be able to handle uncomfortable relationships, um, uh, uncomfortable uh, situations, meaning some of y'all wouldn't be able to go home and talk, tell your husband about that story about the customer that came in and want to show you his big dick because then your husband going to be at work. What you be doing at work for somebody that want to be showing you they dick? Well, sir, I sell dick all day for a living, so it, it ain't uncommon for people to want to... Matter of fact, when they dick be leaking and having STDs and shit, who you think they send a picture to and say, Sharonda, what is this? What do this look like to you? Sir, it look like you need to go to the doctor. I'm saying all that to say, if you will operate in honesty and transparency, 
y'all will be a lot happier as a couple. So let's talk about the different ways infidelity, cheating, or whatever you want to call it can exist. Because most of us think about only physical, okay? And I had to pull up a lot of notes. That's why I had to, um, I said I'm going to have to break this up because it's a lot to unpack. Emotional affairs. Cyber affairs. Those are going to be your, your online affairs, which are the most common because most of us are on... Facebook apps, Instagram, those are all will fall under cyber. Meaning that if he always sliding in somebody inbox or she sliding in somebody inbox or is all these little heart emojis and all this shit the child can't handle. And it, if it go beyond, beyond a, a like and then they're putting a heart and now we're putting the care and all of this kind of stuff, the, that's going to fall under your cyber. Okay. Object affair. Object is going to be when you are fixated on maybe a certain porn star or a certain person where it's not necessarily across the board as far as cyber, meaning you, you going to holler at everybody. Object is when you're fixated on one person or one thing or whatever it is, a hobby, an idea, or whatever. Physical. Physical is going to be one of those ones where it has nothing to do with emotion. It's just a matter of me fucking you, you fucking me, we releasing, we going on about our business. A lot of times you'll find that these this takes place on girls trips, guys trips. It takes place uh, when you just decide to frequent a swingers club for your birthday or whatever. And it happened and there's no type of attachment to it, okay? Micro. Micro is when we are dealing with a certain level of, people like to call it flirting. That, that would be micro cheating. I mean, it's minimized. It's, it's just a little flirting. Um, flirting with people on social media, flirting with a waitress at a restaurant, uh, having a dating profile on a, a singles uh, website when you actually in a relationship, constantly communicating with your ex, even though it's not sexual, even though it's supposedly not be emotional, but it's just that, you know, that what you doing every now and then, um, like going out to different events and festivals with people of the opposite sex that, you know, you kind of got a thing for, but you know, it looks like innocent fun going to like these little retreats that they have when you're in different professional organizations. Um, I know like I'm going to use this for an example. Um, the Q's have an annual retreat. The Deltas, the Masons, the Eastern Stars. These people all had these annual retreats, secretive organizations. Because your spouse ain't a part of it, they can't come. But then you go there and you cut up a little bit more than what you should. Those type of that they will fall under micro. And then financial, which I talked about it the other day, not letting your right hand know what your left hand doing, or left hand know what your right hand doing, however you want to call it. But financial meaning that I'm hiding finances. Yeah. Okay. Um, those are all the different things that fall under infidelity. And I'm going to get into that. But we're going to break that down. But it's flirting, cheating. Well, I think we all flirt a little bit to a certain extent. Yeah, I do. I do. And a lot of times people like to think that we all walk in the straight and narrow all day long. Mm -hmm. But see, flirting is just a way to make people feel good about themselves. Oh, I love that cologne you have on. That smells really good. What are you wearing? That opens up a door for conversation. Oh, your hair is really nice. Oh, you really, you know, but the thing is, sometimes giving compliments is just a compliment, but sometimes people give compliments as a way to start the flirting, is what I'm trying to say. Okay, let's see. I want to get, I'm, I'm still going on. What leads to infidelity? 
I have one answer for that. The only thing that leads to infidelity, cheating, and all of that is just a person is dishonest. That's what leads to it. They're not honest about who they are. They're not honest about what they want. Okay. One thing we have to understand is sometimes people get into marriage because they have an idea of who they want their wife to be. The type of woman, the type of character, the person that they want to have children with, the person that they want to build with, meaning that he may have selected you to marry you because he felt like you would be a good mother, a good nurturer. He felt like you would instill certain principles and values. He felt like you are the type of woman that he can bring anywhere and he don't have to worry about uh, being embarrassed. In other words, he picked you to be his wife for a certain reason. But just because he picked you to be his wife, a lot of times does not mean that you are fulfilling all of his little fantasies and all of these little nasty little quirks and shit that he got. Now, I'm not saying that you can't because a lot of women can. And I teach that in wife school, how to be the feminine asset inside and outside of the bedroom. In other words, how to be an all around woman for your man. But most women that I run into, they lacking in one area or the other. Either they're an excellent wife and not, I mean, an excellent mother and not so much of a good wife. Or either sometimes that they are a really good wife as far as being a praying woman and all of this kind of stuff. But then you can't get nasty in the bedroom. In other words, it's somewhere along that that balance don't exist. And what happens is they go get other people to fill the missing gaps. And that's just the truth. And sometimes you have some men, especially men that, that I like to say they got ADHD, that they can't calm down, always got to be on the go, always looking for something new, looking for adventure. Them type of men just like to hop in some new pussy every now and then. They ain't looking for nothing emotional. They just want to not have to fuck you. In other words, you can literally be doing everything in your power to please this particular person, but because of the personality that, that they have, you know, a lot of y'all say, well, I'm willing to open it up and allow another woman to come in and all of this kind of stuff. But the thing is, he just, he don't want to fuck you. He don't want you to be a part of the equation. He not interested in fucking you tonight. He wants something new without you being there. So it don't matter how much you agree to open up the relationship, how much you agree to have a threesome, how much you agree to do this, that, the other. The truth is, he wants some new pussy without you being there. Then you have these ones that like the idea of sneaking, meaning that it's the sneaking that turns them on. That's what gets them going. And the whole idea of you being all right with it completely turns them off because they want you to not be all right with it because then they could get their thrill from sneaking. So when you don't care, that completely fucked up the thrill. That completely fucked up the fantasy because the fantasy came in with sneaking. But see, you got to know who you with. You got to know how you got him. If he like hooking up behind the piggly wiggly the dumpster before you married him, you better believe because that was a thrill for him. Not only the thrill of fucking you, but the thrill of y'all being behind a public building, the possibility of getting caught, all of this kind of stuff. If you dealing with people that like that type of adrenaline rush, you better believe even after you marry them, they gonna still require that rush. And then a lot of times y'all get married and then y'all wanna slow down and settle down and you don't wanna hook up behind the dumpster no more because you're a mother. You're a mother. You don't wanna go behind the dark alley in New Orleans and just uh, bend over and pull your skirt up because you ain't got no panties on because you're a mother. So I'm trying to get you to understand is the same way you got these people is how you keep these people. The same shit you was doing before that was thrilling and exciting. You got to continue to do it. And when you stop, there's somebody else that got that job. All right. We got different type of behaviors. There may be borderline. Some people may consider cheating. Some people may not. 
grabbing and touching in inappropriate areas. If you was a part of my other Facebook group when I first started it, the, the original PPG group, we went out in public, we cut up, I danced with people, my husband danced with people. You're going to see pictures with Spencer with titties in his hand that wasn't Sharonda's. You're going to see bitches bent over. You're going to see all kind of shit because this is how we enjoy ourselves. And guess what? When it's all over, them people go to their house and we go to ours. That's why so many people were so confused about us and how we was coming because they couldn't figure out if we were swingers, if we was open or what it was we had going on because we allowed each other a certain level of freedom because we understood that each one of us was married to another human being. And I'm the type of person I'd rather be on the knowing end than the not knowing end. Meaning... If me and you talking and we reach some type of level of understanding, I would rather be on the end of understanding what's going on than being on the end of not knowing and you sneaking and doing shit because I don't do well with deceit. Going to an event, having dinner, buying gifts with someone who is not your partner. That's borderline shit. Borderline. But some people would consider it inappropriate. Other people don't. Meaning that some of y'all are okay with your husband having friends that's female. Some of y'all men are okay with y'all having friends. Because everybody know it ain't nothing. Oh, it ain't nothing. Spencer and I have people that we communicate with on a regular basis right now. Of the opposite sex. But we know it ain't nothing. We know the purpose of these people serving our lives. We know why they're around. Constant texting, explicit text, flirting with someone who is not your partner. Now, for me, that's a no-go. I know because I understand communication brings on connection. It's different than going party in a public setting and we all out in the public and there's multiple people and all that. But when you get to focusing on one person, communication brings on connection. So for me personally, I don't do the text buddies. No. But you may be okay with that. Um, being on internet chat rooms, social media, with the intention of flirting or getting other people's numbers or attention. Y'all are in a private group, group right now for ladies. But they have, there's another group on Facebook, um, the Indecent Group. It's like 50,000 people in there. And, it's, and you know, it's a lot of young people. And I go up in there and I like to read. I'm not really one that do a lot of comment or whatever, but I like to read because I like to be in a loop about what people are talking about, the different things that are trending. And even when we started our sex group years ago, when first Facebook kind of first started, people didn't even know that Facebook had other groups. They didn't even know that there was an other side to the regular Facebook. And people see you on Facebook all the time, be like, you always on that little blue app. And they think you on regular Facebook and you off into some other shit that your spouse don't even know that, that you're a part of. It had so many people that was a part of the PPG group. That was single men. I mean, that was married men. It had wives and shit on Facebook and their wives had no idea they was in that group cutting up. And we were so secretive. So you had to do some shit to get in there. See, Facebook can change a lot. I've seen so many dicks and pussies and breasts and all this shit because you had to show me some shit to get up in here. You, in other words, you had to be willing to risk some shit to get up in this group. You want to get up in my shit, bitch, post your pussy. You want to get up in my group? Nigga, show me that dick. Show it to me. We about to talk about it. We going to critique your shit. In other words, we had to have some leverage for you to get up in here. You wasn't going to get up in here just to think you was going to lurk. And see what everybody else got going on. You're going you gonna to show some shit too. And you're going to be so comfortable showing shit to you. And it's going to be like another part about it. That's why I dick and pussy on the end. That shit don't excite me. I done seen so much dick and pussy. So that shit don't excite me. That's why me and my husband could walk around strippers all day long butt naked. And it don't bother us. Because we done seen so much of that shit too. It, it's just another one for us. Grinding and bumping on the dance floor. Where it's just dancing. Pick other cultures do it all the time, but some of y'all can't handle that. But this is borderline stuff that could be or couldn't be inappropriate, okay? Flirting or teasing with someone. Y'all know how people borderline tease and play, but they really be flirting. It's borderline. 
I see in-laws do it with each other all the time, especially at the family functions and all of this kind of shit. When the uncle make a comment about the nephew's wife, big ass, or them big old titties, or be like, God damn. Ooh, nephew, you got you one. Borderline. That is going to conclude my live today. Tomorrow, we're going to get a little deeper. Um, and we're going to talk about cheating and what you can do about it. Because a lot of times, what you don't understand is... If you have a certain type of understanding, it's not cheating when y'all have a certain level of understanding. But the thing is, most of y'all are trying to make people who are not monogamous, you're trying to make them be monogamous. And that's why you have so much heartbreak. Um, when you have a certain level of expectation for people and they don't meet your expectation, that's why you're disappointed. But when you know what you're dealing with and you're accepting what you're dealing with, then you can't be upset and disappointed about nothing because you already understand what it is. Other people on the outside might not understand what it is, but you understand what it is. A lot of problem is people are sloppy and they bring on a certain level of shame to their family. They bring home diseases and babies and all of this other shit that shouldn't happen, but it does. We're going to talk about what leads to it. Um, how men and women, how men and women consider different things to be cheating. So what may be cheating to a man may not be cheating to a woman and so on and, and so forth. Um, and this is what I can't wait to get to this last part is how the affair actually can sometimes help the relationship, how, how it can build it. And I know a lot of that's going to go over a lot of y'all heads, but, um, let me, Oh, here we go. My last page. Um, how it can actually be beneficial, meaning beneficial. I'm looking because I don't, I thought Amber was pulling up. Um, how it can be beneficial in the form of sometimes once we, the, the affair is out in the open, it gives both people the opportunity to basically say their truth. Um, something that they may not have been able to do for a long time, be able to say like, this is what I really desire sexually. This is what I really desire emotionally. I'm over here because this person really makes me feel good and they affirm me in ways that you don't. When you talk to me, you constantly tear me down and you constantly let me know where I lack, but you never let me know what I'm doing right. And sometimes the affair brings out that type of level of communication. Sometimes affairs actually renew relationships. When I say marriages will be restored in 2021, I meant that. A lot of marriages will be restored, renewed. Kind of means the same thing. Hold on a second. Um, then both people will decide if they, they, they will come to a, a understanding if they really still love each other and if it's really worth fighting for. Affair brings, affairs bring all of that type of stuff on. Sometimes affairs help you understand yourself. They understand, they, they help you understand how you ended up in the bed with another person in the beginning. It helps you understand um, you and your partner. So we're going to get off into that. It's a lot to unpack. We got the eggs here at the store. I'm actually going to put a bundle on the internet to where you get this egg and this egg for $20. Okay, you get one for you and one for him for $20. I will be working on that bundle. You all be blessed. You all be safe. You all stay dry unless you're just trying to get wet, baby. Because if you're trying to get wet, I ain't mad about that either. You all be blessed. Enjoy your day.